In this video, I'm going to talk to you about accounting and financial break-even in the context of capital budgeting. So in a standard capital budgeting exercise, what we essentially do is that we calculate net present value. And the net present value of any investment depends on two main things. What are the financial cash flows of that investment? And what is the discount rate or the required rate of return from that investment? And you may recall that financial cash flows in turn depend on operating cash flow, capital expenditures, and changes in net working capital. And operating cash flow in turn depends on sales and costs, and then you subtract depreciation, and of course it depends on taxes as well. Now, whenever we calculate the NPV of any project or investment, we recognize that that NPV depends on the underlying inputs. That NPV depends on what we're expecting our sales to be, what we're expecting our costs to be, CapEx to be, changes in networking capital to be, and of course, what our discount rate is expected to be. And because these inputs can change, we typically do some sort of a sensitivity or a scenario analysis where we say, uh, hey, if our underlying inputs change, uh, what will happen to the underlying NPV? Well, the concepts of accounting and financial break-even are there to supplement our sensitivity and scenario analysis. Specifically, when we do some sort of a sensitivity analysis, for example, we do something like this. We say, hey, you know what? What if our sales end up being higher or lower than what we expect them to be? What will be the impact of this fluctuation in sales on our, say, NPV calculation? Well, the notions of accounting and financial break-even kind of work in the opposite direction. Rather than saying, hey, you know, what will be the impact of this fluctuation in sales on NPV? Accounting and financial break-even ask the question, what is the level of sales at which our project breaks even? Now, the notion of break-even as it turns out, has two definitions. One is called accounting break-even. Accounting break-even basically asks, you know, how much do we need to sell or what the sales level needs to be such that our net income equals zero. And the way we can calculate accounting break-even is by looking at our fixed costs and depreciation and dividing that by price minus the variable cost. This number in the denominator is also known as the project's contribution margin. Contribution margin. The idea behind accounting break-even is rather simple. It says, hey, you know what? When you're going to be selling, let's suppose something for like $10, and your variable costs are, let's suppose, $3, this means for every unit that you're selling, you're making a profit, so, so to speak, of $7. This is your margin. How many times do you need to make $7 so that you can cover all the fixed costs that you incur in selling such that your net income basically equals zero, right? Because this is this $7 is in excess of just your variable costs. You still need to cover your fixed costs. So with fixed costs, you may have some fixed costs here. You might be wondering why is depreciation? What is depreciation doing here? Well, depreciation is representing the use of any capital expenditures that you did in order to start your project. So let's suppose you started a project which cost you like $10,000. This was your capital expenditure, right? This was your CapEx. And you're going to use this machinery over the next, say, five years. And in each year, you're going to use, say, one-fifth of it to 2000 2000 so on and so forth. The idea behind including depreciation as part of your quote-unquote fixed costs is because you're trying to cover your capital expenditures that you did up front using your margins as well. And so you're trying to understand, okay, how much output do I need to sell so that I can make this sort of a margin to cover not only just my fixed costs, like, for example, monthly insurance expenses, but also any depreciation, which is representing the upfront capital expenditures that you did. And so accounting break-even is purely trying to determine how much you need to sell such that you break even in an accounting sense, which basically means net income equals to zero. However, the problem is that, as you can see, if you make, like imagine that you're doing a project where you're spending $10,000 upfront, and let's suppose that you are selling 
uh, your sales are such that your net income is zero in the first year, zero in the second year, zero in the third year, so on and so forth. So you are breaking even. But as you can imagine, this is not, not a profitable project. Why? Because in terms of time value of money, you're losing money, right? Because you're making zero each year. Uh, however, over time, you're also losing the opportunity cost, which is the next best thing that you could have done with your money elsewhere. And so that is the idea of financial break-even. Financial break-even says, look, it's not enough for you to sell just enough to make a zero profit in accounting terms. You need to also be compensated for your time value of money. And uh, the way financial break-even does that is by saying, let's not determine, let's not determine the output we need to sell such that our net income equals zero, but rather when our NPV equals zero. So what is the amount of output we need to sell such that the NPV of our investment equals to zero? And it turns out that in order to determine the financial break-even, the formula tends to be a little bit more complex. You can probably already appreciate that it looks kind of similar to the accounting break-even. For example, you're still looking at how much you're making, uh, how much the price is different from the variable cost. In other words, what is your margin? The only difference is that you're looking at how much margin you're making after taxes. So this is one minus the tax rate. And even in the numerator, even above over here, uh, you still have fixed costs, uh, but you have something like EAC. What is EAC? EAC is the equivalent annual cost. In other words, if you're spending $10,000 upfront today, and you're gonna be using that $10,000 machinery over the next five years, say it's from zero to like five, um, Equivalent annual cost says that, hey, if you had to spend not $10,000 up front, but rather some constant amount over the next five years, accounting for time value of money, you know, what would that be? Uh, it is kind of like depreciation, but not quite, right? As you can probably appreciate, where depreciation is essentially divvying up the 10000 over the five years, and I'm assuming straight line depreciation here. Right, so 2000, 2000, 2000. As you can see, 2000 summed up across five years, that's 10,000. Yeah, it adds up, but it doesn't account for time value of money. EAC is our way of recognizing that there's some time value of money associated with us spending some $10,000 upfront. I'm not gonna go too deep into this formula. The main idea here is that financial break even is also asking how much we need to sell in order to break even. The difference is that here break even means something different. It's breaking even, accounting for time value of money, which is the same thing as asking how much do I need to sell so that the NPV of the investment equals zero. What I'm going to do now is very quickly walk you through a numerical example in which you can use Excel and these formulas to calculate accounting and financial break even. So consider the following example. Suppose there's a company called Solar Air and Solar Air has developed a new product, which is solar powered jet engines. And uh, it's contemplating whether or not it should spend $1.5 million upfront in capital expenditures in order to sell solar jet engines over the next five years. You're given some data on what Solar Air is expecting the market size to be, which is 10,000 jets per year. You're also told what fraction of that market is Solar Air expecting to capture, which is 30%, which means that they're expecting that their annual sales are gonna be 3,000 jets per year, which is just 30% of the industry or the market size. The expectation is that they'll be able to sell each jet for $2 million. The variable cost is going to be $1 million. You're given some other data. And so I'm not going to walk you through all the details of this example. The main point here is that you can use all of this information to determine how much revenue Solar Air is going to get through this project over the next five years. So for example, over the next five years, revenue, if sales are going to be 3,000 jets per year, and price is going to be $2 million. This means that they are going to generate $6 million, $6 million over the next five years. The fixed costs are given. The variable costs are given. You can use all of this information to determine what the operating cash flow will be, what the capital expenditures are, what the changes in networking capital are, and therefore what are the financial cash flows or free cash flows that Solar Air can expect to generate from this investment or from this project. What I've done here is also calculated the NPV and the IRR of this investment. 
Now, the objective here is to determine what is the accounting breakeven and the financial breakeven. In other words, the levels of output that solar air would need to have in order to break even. Right now, they're expecting their sales to be 3,000 jets. However, if one were to ask the question, how much do they need to sell in order to break even, accounting break even would say, and so this is the calculation that I've done over here, simply use the formula that I just showed you a while ago, which is to say, take the fixed cost, take the depreciation, which is basically CapEx divided by useful life. This is, of course, assuming the capital expenditure is going to be depreciated straight line. So in our case, the depreciation expense each year will be 300 million. And then you divide that entire sum by the difference between price and variable cost, which in this case is 1 million. And so when you do that math, you get 2240. In other words, yes, while with 3,000 jets per year, the net income is going to be positive. If somebody were to ask you, what is the level of output at which net income will be exactly equal to zero so that solar air breaks even? it would be 2240. And one way to check that is that you can actually plug in 2240 here and see what the ramifications are. And notice that, no surprises, EBIT is exactly equal to zero. Now, another way in which you can calculate accounting break-even in Excel is using the goal seek functionality. So if you click on data and then go under what if analysis and you'll see this functionality called goal seek, which basically does exactly what it says. It says find the right input for the value you want. OK, we want our value for net income to be equal to zero and we want to accomplish that by changing the underlying sales. So we'll say, hey, you know what? We want to set cell with cell. We want to set EBIT, this number, equal to zero. By changing with cell, we want to change sales. It is imperative that the numbers that you have in your calculations here are being drawn from this number over here, which is in fact the case. For example, this 6,000 revenue calculation that I've done is actually product of these two numbers, two times 3,000. And so when you will ask Excel to do this, Excel will go behind the scenes and start changing this number and see what happens to EBIT. Because when it, Excel will change this number, it will change the revenues, it will change the variable cost, it will change EBIT, and Excel will stop doing this until it reaches the point where EBIT equals to zero. And so if we click on that, we see, see, it's, it started, it was working, and then it eventually stopped at 2240. And so now we know that 2240 is the output level at which the project will break even in accounting terms. Now, we can calculate financial break-even the exact same way. There is a formula. I'm showing you the formula over here. So if you want to calculate financial break-even using this equation, well, you can do that. And in fact, that is what I've done over here. If you double-click on this cell, you'll see the first portion, which is payment into discount rate, useful life, all this fancy stuff that I've done over here. This is just my way of calculating equivalent annual costs. So for example, the discount rate is given, the useful life of the investment is given, for present value, I've put in how much money I'm spending upfront on capital expenditure. And so this is a standard way in which you calculate equivalent annual cost. I have a separate video on that. You can check out the concept of equivalent annual cost and how to calculate it in that video. Once you've done that calculation, you add fixed cost into one minus the tax rate minus tax rate times cell B11, where B11 basically holds a depreciation level and then divided by price minus variable cost into one minus the tax rate. Fortunately, there is an easier way to do this in Excel as well, which is again using the same goal seek functionality. So this is what you would do. You'd go under data. You go under what if analysis again, click on goal seek. This time you're saying, hey, I want to set my NPV equal to zero. Remember that financial break even accounts for time value of money and says we want to determine that output level at which our NPV equals to zero. So you, you say set cell with cell where you're calculating NPV and you want that to equal to zero by changing the same cell, which is your output. And again, please remember that it has to be the case that your NPV calculation is a function of this input, which is the case here, because you've calculated revenue as two times this number, 
And so anytime this number will change, it will change your revenue, which will change your financial cash flow, which will change your NPV. So NPV needs to be a function of this underlying input. And so now if you click OK, Excel will start doing the math and say, you know what, at 2426 or about 2427 jets per year, NPV is going to be equal to zero. And that is exactly the answer that you get from financial break even calculation that we did using this formula over here. The last thing that I want to mention here is that you will notice that the financial break even output level is more than the accounting break even. This shouldn't surprise you. When we will sell 2240, we know that our net income is going to be equal to zero. But when then we also talked about how this level of output doesn't account for the fact that over the five years, if we've made zero, we've lost money in terms of opportunity cost, right? So if we want to determine how much we need to sell, not only to cover our direct costs, but also our opportunity cost, then guess what? We'll need to sell more and financial break even accounts for that. So all else equal, financial break even will always come out to be more than accounting break even because we need to sell more, not only to cover our accounting costs, but also to cover our opportunity costs. And so this then covers the concepts of accounting and financial break even in capital budgeting.